Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Wahara Kakwadash. Double honor to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to the elect of the house of Israel that is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Peace and blessings to you, few good sisters that's listening and learning. Shalom to you as well. The name of this lesson is going to be to stand in the multitude of elders. Stand in the multitude of elders. And what inspired this lesson is just the journey from being a disciple to the apostles. And like my last lesson, how I highlighted and gave the testimonies of Apostle Gabal and Bishop to Zion, how one man walked all the way from Brooklyn, New York, all the way to Harlem, New York, to get to school before time. And Bishop to Zion, he left work to get to school before time. That is a, that is a mark of a disciple, right? That is a mark of a student. That is a mark of diligence. And um, even going back to the scriptures, you had discipleship, you had understudies, you had men that dedicated their lives to be under other men so they can learn the ways of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, the ways of fear of the Lord, and the ways of being a man of the Lord. So I want to get these couple of scriptures. And Lord's willing, this is edifying. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in a way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And these men that I want to highlight in the scriptures, they was trained up as a child. They was trained up under the tutelage or the leadership of the servants of the Lord and they did not depart from what they was taught from these men of the Lord so it says train up a child in a way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it alright and the first man I want to highlight well first let me get this this is the book of Sirach chapter 6 verse 34 it says stand in the multitude of elders and cleave unto him that is wise let me go a couple of verses up this is Sirach chapter 6 verse 32 my son if thou will thou shalt be taught my son if thou wilt thou shalt be taught and if thou will apply thy mind thou shalt be prudent so as the saying goes, if you have a will, there is a way. And we know, being servants of the Lord, and our lives not belonging to us, but belonging to our Heavenly Father and His Son, we know if the Lord wills it, there is a way. We understand if the Lord wills it, there's nothing impossible. With man, these things are impossible. But with the Lord, is nothing impossible impossible my son if thou wilt thou shalt be taught and if thou wilt apply thy mind thou shalt be prudent so it's all about application you must have application right you're going to apply to a job you're filling out a job application it's something that you must do it's an action right and us being service of the Lord we must have action. It ain't about just, I know, I know, I know. It's not about just having faith. It's about having deeds, having works with the faith. Your works and your deeds show you have faith. So it says, if thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou, love, if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. Apostle Kuba always liked to quote, the Heavenly Father gave you two ears and one mouth. 
The Heavenly Father created you with two ears and one mouth. So that means you're supposed to be doing twice as much listening than you are supposed to be speaking. I'm going to say that again. You're supposed to do twice as much listening than you are supposed to be speaking. Right? The book of James say you're supposed to be swift to hear, slow to wrath, slow to speak. So you're supposed to be doing twice as much listening, take it in, than you are supposed to be giving out. And that's in regards to learning, listening, and teaching. So it says, stand in the multitude. Oh, if thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. Because you're taking in more information than you're giving information out. Right? A person that's observant, right? A person that's observant is more wise than a person that's rash and just freestyling and winging it. All right? It says, verse 34 now, stand in the multitude of elders and cleave unto him that is wise. So it is a young man's job, right? The Spirit came upon you to be a servant of the Lord. Now it is your job it is your duty to seek out men that are wise, men that's been doing this longer than you. As the scriptures say, honor your father and your mother for their days shall, their days is long upon the earth. That's two years, that's two uh, individuals, however amount of years they've been in this world that can give you advice and experiences and understanding on things. So it's the same thing with this truth. There's men that's been doing this longer than you've been, that, that's been doing this longer than you have, right? There's brothers that's been doing, doing this longer than you have that can teach you a thing or two. And don't be proud and self-willed thinking I can get this by myself because that is not an attribute of a man of the Lord, right? That is not an attribute of humility, right? You try to be self-willed and you try, you're a novice and you try to do things by yourself. That's just like little kids, man. That shows that you're babes. But a man of understanding will gravitate towards the men that's been doing this longer than them, right? So it says... Stand in the multitude of elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of the understanding escape thee. All right? So you are supposed to take in, soak in all the information, just like a babe is soaking up what their parents do and the people around them doing. You're supposed to be soaking in which your elders, apostles, bishops, older brothers of the faith are showing you. And yes, just like everything else in life, you're going to see bad habits and you're going to see good habits. Right? You're going to see carnal traits and you're going to see spiritual traits. Right? But you know right from wrong or you're learning right from wrong you know what's a good example and a bad example. So you need to gravitate towards the good examples. And you need to mock the perfect man, which that perfect man was Yahweh And you start conducting yourself like that perfect man. Or you start conducting yourself like the men that the Lord gave us on earth today, which are our apostles, elders, and bishops, and older brothers in the faith. You start to model yourself or you live by the righteous examples that you see in front of you. Not only the righteous examples, because the things that are written for time are written for our learning, but the examples that the Lord has right in front of us. Right? So it says, And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes onto him, and let thy foot 
where the steps of his door. So you supposed to always, elder, you got anything planned today? A, a, a older brother in the faith ain't supposed to be seeking you out. A elder and apostle ain't supposed to be seeking you out. You supposed to be seeking them out. Are you available? What's your work schedule? Do you have any time to go over the scriptures with me? Do you have a time to go over the breakdowns with me? Elder, I got a problem going on, you know? But when it comes to going to the bars or going to get some chicks or whatever other worldly things you want to go watch the boxing fight, go watch the games, go watch the playoffs, the Super Bowl, uh, 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 the, the finals, the, the World Series, whatever other sports, right? Whatever uh, football, soccer, uh, final uh, round is, you all for it. Oh, uh, my cousin's having something come through. You got time. Oh, uh, my sister's having a party. She's going to have girls over. You got time. But when it comes to learning the ways of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, learning the fear of the Lord, learning the scriptures and the precepts and the commandments, you ain't got time. And that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. So it says, and if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee be times unto him, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door, man. You know, I was going to put some clips in the video, but I might just do another one. I was thinking about Kung Fu Panda, right? Kung Fu Panda. You got um, Last Dragon. You got uh, Star Wars. You name it. Any movie when a superhero... Or the main character that's about to begin his journey, he has to learn from the character that's been doing this already. Luke Skywalker had to learn from Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Anakin had to learn from uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Obi-Wan had to learn from Kwai Jin. They all had to learn from Yoda, right? See how Luke transferred, he went from Obi-Wan, and then we had to learn to be a true Jedi he had to go to the master, which was Yoda. Right? Obi-Wan was a master too. Alright, for you Star Wars heads. But he had to go to the true master, which was Yoda. Right? Uh, Kung Fu Panda, right? He didn't believe in himself. Right? And, um... But, he had the potential. Right? He had the potential to excel. To be better than any other grandmaster out there, right? And the and the teacher saw that. The teacher saw that, right? So guess what? He started training him with food. He started putting food in front of him, and the nigga learned kung fu. He learned to be a, a, a dragon master just by the teacher or the elder seeing the potential in him, and he went all out. And the same thing. I'm about to highlight with these men that's written in the scriptures, right? And there's plenty of other examples, man. Write them on the comic board, right? Examples of students that had to learn from the master so they themselves can become masters, right? Uh, you got, what's that? Karate Kid, all right? You got, uh, what else you got out there? Karate Kid is another good one. There's, a, there's plenty of examples of students that became masters, man. All right? It says, Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom in the time and thy own desires. All right? So, it's got to become a mentality, right? I always speak about mentality, kingdom heaven mentality, born again mentality. These have to be, these have to be your new habits. These got to be the things trended onto you. Just like the habits before was picking up that bottle. The habits before was picking up that blunt, right? Rolling up, always rolling up, always going to the liquor store. Those are habits. These scriptures and seeking after. Uh, learning from your elders has to be your new habits. And once again, 
The elders ain't got to be seeking you out. You supposed to be seeking them out. Seeking what time they're available. If you could, if they could go over the scriptures with you. All right? Because that's why the Lord set us up. That's why the Lord set the apostles up. So we could be fed spiritually. So the first example I'm going to get, I'm going to get Numbers chapter 11, verse 28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord, Moses forbid them. All right? So Joshua was a servant to Moses. Right? When you heard Moses' name, you heard Joshua's name. Because Joshua was coming, he was a young man of the next generation that was coming up in the ranks. And guess what? He followed every order that Moses told him. And guess what happened when Moses ended up leaving? At the start of scripture I gave you, train up a child, I train up a child in his way, he shall not depart from me when he gets old. When Moses left this earth, Joshua became the new Moses. He came in a position, in a place Moses came in, because he tra he trained up under Moses. He stuck by Moses' side, man. He was by Moses' side the whole time. And whatever Moses told him to do, he went to do it. Because he knew that Moses was a man of God. This is Exodus 17 and 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of the Most High in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron heard went up to the top of the hill. All right? So if Moses told Joshua to go to war, Joshua was going to war, man. It, was, it wasn't no questioning. It wasn't no, well, I don't think I should be risking my life. <laughs> Moses told Joshua to go to fucking war, go out there and kill these damn Edomites for our sake, for Israel's sake, for our power's sake. Joshua without a question. Cunt, cunt out of one cunt. <laughs> cunt out of one cunt. Kill who? I'll be back. Josh, Josh, who you want me to kill, Moses? Point. Which way? What? I'm, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> and then Josh, yo, Moses, they dead. <laughs> the Lord is with us. I'm no Walla, right? God be with us. The Lord is with us. Isaiah, Lord is our help. Right? Praises and glory to Yahweh. Right? We won this victory. So that is one man that went into the multitude of the elders. That is one man that cleaved onto the doorsteps of the elders. Right? This is the second example I have. This is 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass when Yahweh would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahweh have sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As Yahweh liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that Yahweh will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee. For Yahweh have sent me to Jericho, and he said, As Yahweh liveth, and thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that Yahweh will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it, hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee. I don't know why it, it went back up. I pray thee here, 
for Yahweh have sent me to Jordan, and as and he said, as Yahweh liveth and thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. So Elijah wanted Elisha by his side, right? And Elisha was like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna stay by your side. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood in view afar off. And they too stood at my joy. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither. And so the two went over dry ground, just like Moses parted the sea. I believe Joshua parted the sea. Or it might have been Moses again in Jordan. Yeah, it might, I think it was Moses. Um, and Joshua parted the sea. Shows you that the Lord... Uh, grants his men spiritual power. There was, there was not one time period the Lord didn't let his men perform miracles. It was not one time period. All right. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, "Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee." And Elisha said, "I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon thee." So Elisha, which was an understudy to Elijah, he was a disciple to Elijah. He stood by Elijah's side, right? Which is all spiritual, right? Elijah knew that he was leaving the earth because the Lord told him. And he, just like all our forefathers, before they leave the earth, they usually prophesy was going to happen or they bless or curse people right and he said thou has asked a hard thing nevertheless if thou see me when I am taken from thee it shall be so unto thee but if not it shall not be so right so Elijah told him a double portion of my spirit I don't know if I could do that but if the Lord is with you you're going to see this miracle happen before your eyes. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up and by the whirlwind into heaven. So he was, tra he was translated. All right. He ain't die like normal men. The Lord just came and took his spirit. And Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof, which are the angels. And it says, And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his clothes and rent them into two pieces. And he took also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is Yahweh power of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither and Elisha went over. So guess what? The Lord blessed Elisha and he granted Elisha's uh, request. And guess what? Elisha had spiritual power. And that's what happens when you stand by the side of the elders and you do right. And not just kissing their ass and being a brown nose, right? Just to be up under them. You doing this so you can learn, so you can better yourself. And in the, meet, in the process, you also helping the elder out. But you doing it so you can learn to fear the Lord. You can learn keep the precepts and the commandments to help your faith grow that's why you stick by the side of the elders and you wear out the doorsteps of the elders once again the elders should be seeking you out you should be seeking out the elders pretty much that's it I pray and hope that y'all was edified I'm going to give all praises honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Wahara Kakwadash leave your comments, leave your questions do your responses to next time I say Shalom.